Sidney Lumet had gotten a job to do a movie for Sophia Loren and her being produced by her husband, Carlo Ponti, and they needed a writer to do the script. And Sidney suggested me, and Ponti didn't know who the hell I was or what anything. He didn't speak English very well, and he was here in New York, uh, uh, hadn't been here very much or often. So they hired me, and it was for Paramount Pictures, uh, and they didn't know anything about me either. I hadn't been out and active in California, and so it kind of slipped through, and I got, uh, I started work on the movie, and all of a sudden I was there, I was working. You were in Hollywood. Well, I, I started here, and then I, uh, they wanted me, to, they, their operation was in Hollywood, so they wanted me to come out to Hollywood, uh, which I did, and I, you know, was writing it, and they were pleased, and uh, Paramount was going to make a multi-picture contract with me working for Ponte, uh, and I was in Hollywood, and then my agent, a man named Irving Lazar, called me and said, Paramount won't approve the contract. I said, why? And they said, because there's a subpoena out for you from the House Committee on American Activities. And they knew about it. I didn't know about it or anybody else, but they, Paramount knew about it. They had their contacts on these things. And I said, thank you very much. And I packed my bag and I flew back east and I went on the lam. I uh, went up to Connecticut, Rhode Island, some friends, they gave me a little house. And I finished writing the script there. I'm still writing it. And uh, they never served me with the subpoena. It was for the last hearings here in New York and they held the hearings. And <clears throat> Uh, and I was never served, and then I finished the script, and they went through the picture, but Paramount wouldn't, still wouldn't do the contract. They insisted, excuse me, they insisted I go and, and testify. And then Ponte came back from Europe, <coughs> where he was, and I had a meeting with him, and I brought my lawyer, and he brought an interpreter, because his English wasn't good, and uh, I explained uh, if I were subpoenaed, what I would do, I would, at that point, I said I would probably talk about myself, but I wouldn't name anybody else, and uh, that was my position. And the interpreter explained this to Ponte in Italian, and Ponte rattled off a long stream of Italian. And the interpreter turned to us and said, Mr. Ponte would like to know who has to be fixed and for how much. He kept saying, it's politics, it's politics, all bullshit com compared to making a movie. Really, it's just it was a politician. You pay him off. That's right, and you fix everything. But uh, uh, Paramount still wouldn't go through with it. And, uh, and then Yul Brynner was going to direct a movie of the Seven Samurai, which became the Magnificent Seven, and that was for United Artists. And uh, they hired me to do that. They took the attitude they didn't know anything about subpoenas or anything like that. And as soon as I worked, started working for them. Paramount got interested again and asked me to uh, come in if, if I would meet with the head of the studio. And uh, I said, sure. And I went in. He was a very courtly southern gentleman, very, very reactionary politically, you know, to the right of John Wayne. And, uh, uh, and he had my, again, he had my dossier, like that colonel in the army in front of him, going way back to college. and everything I'd ever done politically or thought of politically. And he said, do you mind going through this with me and telling me is it true and what you think? And I said, sure. I didn't, at that point, I didn't care anymore. And we did. We went down through it and some of the things I said I still agree with and some of the things I don't anymore and this is what I did and this is what I didn't do. And at the end of it, he said, fine, I think you've been honest and uh, I'll, let me talk about this with friend who advises me on these matters, who's the president, the commander-in-chief of the American Legion. I'll discuss it with him, and then I'll let you know. I said, fine. And two weeks later, they called me and said, okay, you can go back to work. And uh, Using your name? My name, yeah. Walter Bernstein. Walter Bernstein, finally. And uh, I still couldn't work in television for another two or three years.